Hi, I'm Jane Schatz. Today we're going to have a nice lesson on glazing. Not about chemicals, calculation, but how to glaze. It's how to make your pieces snap, look beautiful with layering glazes and different techniques. All right, um, I'm going to mix up that Choi Green Glaze and I've written down my chemicals and how many grams I'm going to use. My uh, largest component to the recipe is nepheline cyanide. So I'm going to first do 800 grams. I have my chemical over here. Now, this is what I'm talking about going very carefully and not getting dusty. Being, using a very big scoop will help you. Move it in here. Now notice I'm working like a robot. I'm working very, very slowly. And I'll do that again. I'm going to leave this down because I'm going to be using it. Now, putting it from here to here, you don't want dust. Now remember, I'm using that respirator, but today I'm not. So even though I use a respirator, I do the same thing. I put this in incredibly slowly. So now I'm going to do 1,217. That was very easy. Now here we go again, being very careful to just put it in slowly. Right. So I've added water, a little bit of water to this, and now I'm going to go on to my second chemical. My next glaze chemical is whiting and I only need 480 grams. Uh, my next ingredient is zinc oxide and I'm going to need 423 grams of that. Okay, my next ingredient is flint and I only need 63 grams of that. So I'll measure that in. Okay, we're getting to the end of this recipe finally. The last thing I have for my main uh, clay base is 195 grams of lithium carbonate. Now my last um, chemical that I'm going to add is the colorant, which is copper carbonate. Okay, and that's it. Now we're going to put this in very slowly. Don't get sloppy just because you're at the end of the weighing. Now we're going to do the next phase of glazing. That means waxing the bottoms of your pieces. Right now I'm going to use the wax resist to just do the bottoms to protect the bottoms from getting glazed on the kiln shelf. Notice that I put the wax, the brush into the wax and I take off some of the wax and then I go to my pot. Now I wax the bottom and because of the design of this platter, it's a hand built slab platter, I like to go a little bit below the, the place where it hits the table. I will be using the small brush and I usually work on a banding wheel but I'm going to put this in my hands to show you. I very carefully on the side of the brush, I don't know if you're able to see that on the camera, I just go and it's not that I'm being casual, it's just that my hand is used to doing this. And as far as that word, detail. It's my favorite word in art. If you are aware and conscious of detail, you can make beautiful work. It's amazing how the little things, the little detail, make a piece really soar and sing. What I'm doing is I'm just going around in a circle with the mixer and getting the glaze mixed. It doesn't take long. Here's the platter that I have waxed. I'm going to start with the back first. I'm going to take my uh, measuring cup of glaze and I'm going to glaze this section of the outside of the pot. Shake it off. Now, because it takes a while for this to dry up, and I need to hold that to do the bot this, this bottom section, 
I'm going to just turn it around and do the inside the first half. So exactly what I just did, I'm going to take my glaze As you can see, the piece is starting to dry. The glaze is getting absorbed into the pot. Before I handle it, I want to just go over and quickly clean off the edge of my piece. Okay, now I'm going to do the rest of the piece in the ketchup glaze. Holding it up here, I go into the bucket and glaze the part that was not glazed. I usually like to go up in a easy pattern above where I stopped so I don't get a fine line. Turn the piece over and do it again. Okay. All right. I'm going to add a second layer of glaze on this platter now and I'm going to make my decorations. These pieces, these platters, these flat platters with the three colors that I put on, they look like mountains and landscapes, so I kind of take that uh, with me as I decorate the piece. I also look at the form. Do I want to start my heaviest color here, or do I want to do it this way? Or do I want to do it this way? For me, I like this way. Have that be the grounding part of my piece. Now, the reason why I have this glaze in a little bucket is because I thinned it down a lot. I usually use this glaze a little bit thicker. So here I go. Now, every time you add a second or a third coat of glaze, it takes a longer and longer time to dry. So this is going to take a while, but when we come back, it'll be dry and ready for the third coat of glaze. I will, by the time we come back, clean off this edge again. You always clean off the edge because if I had left any of the ketchup red on the wax and glazed over it, it's not going into the pot. It's being resisted, so it was just laying on top. As this is laying on top, if I hadn't washed it off, then when I put my next glaze on, that glaze would go into my bucket and I would contaminate my bucket. So I'm always cleaning off the pot. We are now working with our third layer of glaze, and I'm just going to do a little area here to highlight this beige. And how you move around the pot determines your form and your glaze flow. So, with the third layer of glaze, the glossy black, on top of the rutile mat and on top of the ketchup glaze, I will come out with a piece that looks like that over here. And that is my tricolor red, ketchup red. Now, this bowl is actually small enough for me to put into the whole bucket at one time. But then I wouldn't be able to give you a demonstration on how to glaze a very large bowl. So I'm going to glaze this small bowl as if it were a large bowl so you get that information. First, I'm going to hold the pot upside down with my hands in here, like so. Okay? You lean over. This, make sure that you just hit the glaze a little bit with your measuring cup and go along the outside of the piece. This is where the handle comes in. Very handy. A handy handle. And finish up glazing the outside of the piece. You'll notice that because I waxed in here, I get a beautiful unglazed area because that will be a nice toasty brown, the color of my, my clay body. I'm going to let this dry and then we'll do the interior next. All right, <clears throat> the piece is now dry enough for me to put my hands on the outside. Of course, before you hold your pot, make sure your hands are washed and dry before you touch the uh, glazed pot. Now, if it was a big pot, I would probably hold it like this and get the glaze in here. Or I might still hold with my hand like this and glaze the interior 
and hold it. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to hold it with my one hand, get the glaze in, put the glaze, the, the uh, measuring cup down, and then swish the glaze and out. And that's how I do large bowls. So, get my glaze ready. Get a lot of glaze in the pot. Wipe my hands on my apron. Move the pot, the glaze around to the rim of the pot as carefully as I can. Don't get too upset if while you're doing this, you happen to spill it on the floor. It happens. It's never easy. Okay, then. Okay. That's the first part. And I have to touch up the rim, which I will show you in a minute. The rim didn't get uh, all of the glaze because of the way I glaze it, so I'm going to touch it up. Now, when you touch up a pot with glaze, you want to do it so you don't see brush marks or finger marks. You take a nice brush, bigger than what you need, and tap it. Don't brush it. Tap it along the edge. A nice thick edge of glaze is always beautiful. You don't want a thin layer of glaze on your rim. Okay, let's be creative. We can have a shiny black pot, the profile of your bowl being black, and keep it black, and just have a blue interior. Or we can do it in the opposite. We can have the outside blue and the interior black. We can have the whole thing a solid midnight blue. Or we can create a pattern by the way I put the blue glaze on top of this black glaze, which is what I'm going to do since I happen to like doing that. Now this time, instead of pouring it like uh, I did with the uh, tricolor, I'm going to dip it. Now I know I told you I was going to pour this to make, let you see what I would do if it was a big pot. Well, you saw me pour. You can pour it in uh, nice patterns, but I want to get a really geometric line, which dipping does the best for me. So you analyze the pot, and if the bowl is one that can fit in, you might want to do that. So I'm going to do that. I've mixed up my blue, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to catch it so I get uh, just a little bit under half of the pot and glaze. Okay, they're very similar in color, so I don't know if on the video you can see this, but I have one glaze over the next. I have to let this dry because in order to do it on the other side, I have to be able, able to hold this. And remember, I told you, when you add a second glaze, it takes a lot longer for that to dry than when you just did the first. So it'll be a few minutes before I can finish glazing this piece. Okay, I'm going to be doing the second half of this pot with the glaze, um, but before I do that, I'm going to use my whisk to just give the glaze a little bit of a stir. It's been about five minutes since I've used it, and if any glaze particles settle down, I'll get a thin application. So I'm just going to whisk it up, and then wash my whisk immediately so that it washes very easily, and then I can very nicely just go in and do the second part of my piece. And I'm going to put it at a slight angle. Hold it upside down so I don't get any drip marks. Then hold it upright. I don't know if you can see it on the glaze, but I got a beautiful triangle of black and the midnight blue around it. I will clean up the piece of the wax of foot on the bottom, just sponge it down, and this piece is good to go. So I'm going to get my brush, and I'm going to go whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, well that's kind of cool. A little interesting, not too dramatic. So I'm going to do some dots. And I love dots, so I'm going to have a little fun with my dots. 
And when it's all dry, I will show you. I think what I want to do is follow up the big bold brush stroke with a small brush stroke. So I'm going to use just the tip of this and I'm going to go on the other side of it just to add a little bit more decoration and give it some more variety. The piece will have a beautiful black and orange, black and orange. I have two applications of the Choi Green Glades. I have a, a darker area and then I have these squeegee, these are pores that I did that are going to come out green. I can see this when I look at it very faintly but very carefully. I can see the angle of those second pores. I'm going to accentuate those pores with some further glazing. This is Costello Carbonate. It's another glaze that I have. It's a green glaze, but it's different than the, these other glazes. It has a different color. It works beautifully on my Choi Green, so I like to use it. And I have it in just a simple squeegee bottle. All right, here I go. This is my Costello. And then I'm going to follow it up with this beautiful little sour apple. I don't know why dots are so much fun, but they just are. Well, this has been a wonderful session. I hope you enjoyed watching me mix up glazes and glaze these pots. And um, I'm hoping that you will co come away with a, a desire to mix up your own glazes and start glazing with flair. So look at the pots. Here's another little view of them all.